Hey, Steve Miani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a 1967 Olds Toronado, the second year for the mighty Toronado. You got to remember that in today's world where front wheel drive is seen on every other car, if not almost every car, in 1966 when a Toronado debuted with front wheel drive, it was the first post-war American car mass produced that had front wheel drive. It was truly a revolutionary car and had Oldsmobile's most exotic styling touches. Now keep in mind the price on this new, the base price in 67 was $4,869. It was the most expensive Oldsmobile, even more so than a Delta 98 Royale whiz-bang mobile. These are more expensive. Even a Corvette was $1,000 less expensive than this car when it was new. Base price. So this thing at $4,869 could be maybe a $6,000 car fully, fully loaded. So uh, a very uh, expensive car to buy and for Oldsmobile to produce. And again, this is the second year for this design. And something that's beautiful about Olds Toronados is the way the headlights pop up like this. Now this is a subtle difference right here, 67 versus 66, the debut year. Let's take a peek, we'll pop that hood open and support it. And we can see right here, this is 1966, the debut year. Similar, but not the same. Those little insets right there were done away with in 67. So when these close, it's truly smooth and shut, like we see right here. Very much gone, no more gaps. And in fact, the egg crate grill also arrived for 67, replacing the horizontal slats seen in 66. And again, classic GM facelifting, taking an interesting looking car and making it better. But here we have here, and they're talking about change and what it means. After all the pomp and ceremony of the first year, 1966, Toronado has quite a reputation to uphold. New flush concealed headlamp design, one of the many things. And of course, on the next page, what really makes the old Toronado special is the front wheel drive, that cutaway picture right there. And it is interesting, it's a body on frame car. It's kind of an interesting little design. Torsion bars up front, yeah, just like a Chrysler, those longitudinal torsion bars right there, those are torsion bars. Drums all the way around, disc brakes were optional in 67 for the first time. But again, leaf springs at the back and six shock absorbers. Yep, there's four shocks in the back, two sideways, two vertical. But again, just a beautiful car. Just a delicious looking car. We'll, we'll get into that more in a second. But another thing that's kind of neat is you got to remember that Oldsmobile absolutely was paying tribute to the original front wheel drive mass produced car, the Cord. Of course, the Ruxton was in there too, but pre World War II, the Cord was the other generally acknowledged front wheel drive car in America. And uh, here we have, this is uh, Michael Lamb was the art author of this. And Michael Lamb, still alive and well, one of the most influential automotive writers to me. Uh, he did a lot of writing for Special Interest Automobile, for Motor Trend way back when. But look how he points out for the first time, really, that the Oldsmobile wheels and the cord wheels are very similar in the way they have that offset, those holes. And again, the front wheel drive uh, was not lost on the Olds engineers who came up with it. Speaking of which, David North, he's the guy who came up with the basic Toronado style and Michael Lamb is writing here. My first glimpse of the Toronado arrived in a movie, and I clearly remember the impression. I was working at Motor Trend magazine at the time. This was the summer of 1965, and a group of old public relations people and engineers had flown in from Lansing, Michigan to Los Angeles to show us a film of this new car. They didn't say so, but Olds wanted very much to have Motor Trend's 1966 Car of the Year award, and they received it. But with that said, Olds Toronado very much worthy of Motor Trends Car of the Year Award. And something we don't see or think about is the fact that usually there are a lot of dead ends. The two-seater on the right, yeah, there it is. It says, in lobbying for a smaller Toro, GM design staff cut about a foot out of a 69 model, chopped the overhang, and made a two-seater. And on the right, there's a wagon. Olds and GM Designs built several Toro wagons, all with low rear floors, tailgate dropped, etc. So yeah, very interesting that the Toronado we see uh, evolved. And on the right-hand side, we can see right there the various shapes and and, and forms in February of 63 is when they pretty much locked down the look that would make production in 66, three years later. So it's just interesting to see, but Special Interest Auto still lives on to some degree in Hemming's Classic Car, a fantastic magazine, and some of the same writers and articles, you'll still see them in Hemming's Classic Car, but again, Special Interest Automobiles, as opposed to collector cars. Special Interest Cars are sort of vehicles that are common, but are special and are worthy of interest, like the Toronado. Now this thing does have the 425 cubic inch Olds V8, the dual snorkel air cleaner, how cool is that? 
And underneath it, there it is, the Rochester Quadra Jet, which was new for 66. We have it right here uh, in its second year. Again, the Quadra Jet, the beauty of this thing was tiny primaries for economical cruising, big secondaries underneath this uh, air valve, big secondaries, and that gave you wide open power. About 700, 750 CFM right there. It's as big as a classic Holly four barrel, and yet you can cruise around on the primaries and save fuel. It truly was having your cake and eating it too. Now this Toronado does have air conditioning, as most of them did, but again, with a base price of $4,869, this was a thousand bucks more than a Corvette Coupe in 1967. You really had to want one of these when you bought it. And again, there were 21,790 people who wanted one of these cars. And here we have the front drum brakes. Discs were an option for the first time in 67, but here we have the basic drums. And here's the spindle nut right here, showing this is a driven hub. That's a front wheel drive setup right there. We saw the picture. And a very wide stance on these cars. The fenders flare out. Just a beautiful use of surface and development of, of curbs, the horizontal line down the side, graceful greenhouse, beautiful fastback body on this, and uh, on the back, of course, drum brake in the rear too, and here is the back drum exposed, here are the shoes, and then here are the shock absorbers vertical, oh, hello there, and then horizontal shocks, so we have basically uh, drums and leaf springs at the back. Interesting stuff. Here's the horizontals and the verticals, kind of like the Ford Mustang Quadralink of 1985, believe it or not. A whole different deal, but just the same. Interesting stuff. Inside, there was an option of bucket seats, and we don't see them here. Uh, this one here, it is a column shifted automatic, so no, no buckets and console. But, uh, you know, the air conditioning ball here, the astro ventilation, which would arrive, uh, and of course the steering wheel, the drum type speedometer, and a really a comfortable place for six people to ride. And the most important thing on this is the flat floor. We can see there's no drive shaft, tunnel front or rear. That's the whole point of having the drivetrain in the front of the firewall. Now, MPC was right there. They made a model of the 67 Toronado right here. And it's a great thing. A lot of kids learned about the Toronado by building this model. Here's the drive unit up here. Custom stuff if you wanted to go that way. Why improve on an already great thing? Don't know. But here's the uh, underside. And it taught a lot of people, you know, the workings of a car to build a model then is now. And we can't forget, of course, that in 67, the Cadillac Eldorado arrived on the scene. This basically was the first year for Eldorado. Olds came out a year first, Toronado. But it was the same e-body platform shared between the two cars. Both were front-wheel drivers. Cadillac, of course, had a Cadillac engine, a 429, not a 425, like the Olds. But again, uh, the old Johan kit was uh, also a very educational thing. But my favorite aspect or favorite look on these things is at the rear, uh, where the tail is pinched, almost a cam effect here, horizontal brake lights all the way across. And my favorite thing, really, seen in 68 up Olds 442s, but first seen on 66 Tornados, is how the dual exhaust system has these little cutouts right here that have a lip on them. It's just, it's a beautiful tail light or tailpipe treatment right there. And first seen on Toronado, and again, by 68, the old 442 muscle car would have the same look, but it started right here. But I love how the tail of the car is pinched down, just a fantastic looking, massive American car. And something kind of cool, the plate on this, Vermont vanity plate, LLBP, who could that have been? But there it is right there, last registered September of 87. So this has been off the road for quite a long time. And 1967, first year for the GM Mark of Excellence. This little doohickey right here, this should appear on all GM cars in 67 up. Basically a reminder to the world that GM makes quality cars. The cinnamon red metallic, beautiful stuff. And it's interesting too, the rear seat passengers also had their own door handles. Up front, you would use this, this little latch here to get out but in the back, he had another one. But again, an interesting piece. Oh yeah, and here's that drum speedometer right there. We can see that is a drum. It goes from zero to 130, and there's the, uh, the, the scroll effect there. But that's the story of how uh, Olds Toronado in its second year uh, was a thousand bucks more expensive than a Corvette. So uh, very special vehicle. And remember too, that Oldsmobile is gone. 2004, I think was the final year for Oldsmobile, founded in the 1890s. America's longest running automaker, now long gone. But boy, they made some beautiful cars. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and hit the bell so that you're aware of the next video which comes out tomorrow morning.